Good evening, my name is Fawn Hunter. I just want to thank everybody who is attending our weekly college fair through our virtual uh, meetings and also through our virtual views that'll be available later online. Um, I just wanna give you a little bit insight on our TCUs as far as myself. I have attended a TCU when I first graduated from high school. I started out at um, Haskell Indian Nations University. Um, as you see there, my title, I work with Washoe County School District. I'm the Indian Education Program Specialist for Washoe County School District. Um, later going on to finish a degree in Justice Studies and a Bachelor's in Science and a Master's in Administration with Public um, Policy and Government. And this evening, I'd like to also introduce Cordina Dry Romero, who is the Education Program Professional for Nevada Department of Education. Dina? Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Cordina Dry Romero with the Nevada Department of Education. I'm Southern Paiute from uh, the Kaibab Bana Paiutes and the Mwapa Bana Paiutes, and I'm excited to be here. I'm also a TCU graduate, so this um, topic is uh, really uh, instrumental to me, and I'm excited to share the information to the uh, Washoe County School District parents. Next slide, please. Um, now, I want to, I would like to introduce you to the tribal colleges. Um, if you're unfamiliar um, with the TCUs, here's a map of the 37 tribal colleges and universities throughout the country. Um, in 1968, the first tribal college was established um, as the Navajo Community College. And since then, it's been renamed the Dene College. According to the American Indian Higher Education Consortium, known as AHEC, in 1973, the first six American Indian tribal colleges established AHEC to provide a support network as they work to influence federal policy on Indian education, higher education. Uh, today, AHEC has grown to 37 TCUs in the United States, and it further states that each of these institutions were created and chartered by its own tribal governments or federal governments for a specific purpose to provide higher education opportunities to American Indian students through programs that are locally and culturally based, holistic and supportive. So today I'm excited that we're gonna hear from three of these tribal colleges as well as the American Indian College Fund. Next slide, please. One program that we just recently started in Nevada through the Nevada Department of Education's Native Youth Community Project is the Amplified Nevada Native Youth, which is Annie for short, where it seeks to provide a roadmap to support students in virtual learning platforms it's a resource hub for students, families, and educators. We've had a privilege to interview American Indian students, um, educators um, who are in school and also recent graduates to share their experience, as well as um, interview some of the post-secondary professionals who share scholarship information, internships, fellowships, et cetera. So um, tonight you'll get a little glimpse of Annie in the Sippies presentation. So we're excited to showcase that. And so today, um, as you, you heard, we're recording this presentation and hopefully you'll be able to see it and view it on one of Annie's virtual platforms. And we'll share the uh, Annie YouTube page in the chat. So in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe, Facebook or Instagram, our Amplified Nevada Native Youth. Just Google and it'll come up. Next slide, Vaughn, back to you. Thank you for Dina. So our first college that we will speak to or will speak for us this evening is Adam Lane from Northwest College. Go ahead and take it away, Adam. All right, thanks. Um, my name is Adam Lane. Um, I am the admissions recruiter here at Northwest Indian College. Um, we're up in Bellingham, Washington. And let's see here to share my screen. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing, Adam, so you can uh, share yours, OK? OK. <laughs> Sorry. OK, there. So now you're, you're ready. OK. So let's see. Yes, I'll do this. Thank you. 
Okay, so um, just a little info about the college, uh, different opportunities here at Northwest Indian College. Um, our mission is through education, Northwest Indian College promotes indigenous self-determination and knowledge. Um, so getting started, so it's super easy to get started. Um, first first uh, thing you need to do is apply. So it's free to apply. We don't have any application fees. Um, you just need to go on our website, nwic.edu. Um, and then fill out the application for admissions. And then while you're there, fill out um, the housing application as well for our resident life center. Um, next is um, applying for financial aid. Um, so students uh, need to go to studentaid.gov and uh, fill out their FAFSA. Um, and then uh, remember our school code 021800 um, along with all the other information needed there. Um, and then once you do that, you can um, schedule an appointment for your placement test. Um, and then this is your math, reading, and writing um, to determine where you're going to be placed at. Um, and so once you take the placement test, basically you can meet with an advisor. Um, they'll create your degree plan for you um, and, and give you your, your schedule, your quarterly schedule um, to keep you on track to graduating. Um, and then you, you register for and, and start attending classes. So. Um, super easy. We've been trying to make it uh, as easy as possible for students to, to get signed up. Um, so our cost of attendance, um, our tuition rate, it's $135 a credit. Um, so if you're full time, it's just under $1,700 uh, if you're going to take 12 credits. Um, and then um, our housing. So if you're going to stay at the dorms, it's, it's $900 per quarter. Um, so um, the, the annual cost uh, with all your expenses here, uh, $14,628. Um, so this is a little on the high end. We're, we're usually able to, to cut down some of these costs, but um, just a, um, a, a good you know, rule of thumb to plan on that. And then if it ends up being less, then um, all the better. Um, so our annual headcount, this is our, our annual headcount throughout the year. Um, our main campus up in Bellingham, uh, we typically have 300 to 400 students. So um, it's, it's a large campus. Our campus uh, classroom sizes are eight to 12. Um, you might get a couple of classes where you have, you know, 20 or 25 students, but um, typically it's around the eight to 12 student um, per class. And then, you know, we have a high native student population being a tribal college. Um, a higher number of female students, so we're, we're, around 70 percent uh, female students on campus. Um, we have over 115 tribes represented within our student body. Um, so it's just it's not just students from the Northwest. We're getting students who travel and come here from all over the country. Um, and then our average age is 32. Um, our main campus is a little bit lower. We get a lot more of the traditional students at our main campus. Um, and then our gra average graduate GPA is 3.28. So our students who are going through and completing their degree are, are doing really well in classes. Um, uh, courses, so in, in a normal year, um, we're gonna have classes on campus, day and night courses, um, interactive telecourses where you can video in with our main campus uh, if you're not able to make it to campus, independent learning courses, um, which are you get all the work and you kind of go at it at your own rate. Um, so this is, you know, students who have jobs, or, or a family aren't able to you know, get to class at specific times, gives them a little more flexibility. And then online courses. So right now, um, all of our courses are online for the rest of the year and probably into next year as well. And so this, it's actually kind of helped us. It's, it's um, expanded the amount of courses that you can take online. So before we had a little bit more limited courses, now we have a little bit more flexibility with that. Um, our site locations, so um, we have different sites throughout the Northwest um, at some of the tribes in Washington and Idaho. Um, and our main campus, uh, like I said, it's in Lummi in Bellingham, Washington. Um, we, uh, since 2007, we've had nine new buildings go up. Um, and so our total number on campus is 24. Um, and down here below, uh, we have a link to our virtual campus tour. It's also on our website, um, so you can get on and uh, take a virtual tour around and see what campus looks like. Um, but here's uh, an overhead view um, on the top half of the screen. That's our original campus. And then the bottom half, those are our, our, our latest additions to our campus. 
Um, and I'm gonna go through these pretty quick. Um, but there's just some pictures from around campus, some of the buildings, uh, our dorms here. Um, so our dorms uh, house uh, 67 students um, and we'll be at or near capacity just about every year. So um, it's important to get your application in early to, if you're gonna be staying in the dorms to make sure you get a spot in, uh, get, get your spot saved in there. Um, and, you know, it's right here on campus. We also have apartments available for students who, who have families. Um, and then our Center for Student Success, this is kind of our one-stop shop. So when you come to campus, um, you're a new student, um, this is where you'll wanna go. This is where our admissions office is, advising, enrollment, financial aid, testing, trio athletics recruitment. So um, everything is, is here in this building. Um, you can come in and get it all taken care of, usually in one day. So um, our, our staff here is usually really good about that. Uh, some more pictures around campus. And then um, we have a couple buildings that are that have broken ground and we're just waiting for construction. That is our gym, our health and wellness center, uh, and our workforce training center. So we're just waiting, waiting for those to go up now. Um, student activities. So again, in a normal year, we'll have students on campus and all these um, clubs and activities will be active. So there's a number of opportunities for students. Um, Indigenous service learning does uh, community service projects. Um, around our communities, um, ABLE is for anyone interested in business, ACES, um, our Rocket Club, Ski and Boarding Club, Pow Wow Club, um, our AHEC competitions, and our theater and play productions. So there's lots of things on campus to keep students you know, active um, and engaged. Um, athletics, so we have a men's and women's basketball team every year. Um, we have um, other sports, based, uh, usually uh, it's based on student interest. So uh, we don't always have a team, but we've had volleyball, cross country track. Uh, it just depends on the, the students who are um, on campus for that specific year. Uh, and then um, the American Indian Higher Education Consortium, um, that, that is uh, the you know, group of tribal colleges across the country. So we come together and play a tournament every year um, and then there's a student conference um, every year. Uh, the, the location varies, um, but it's just an opportunity uh, for students from all of these tribal colleges to come together. Um, there's competitions, uh, athletic and academic competitions. Uh, it's, just, it's just a lot of fun. It's, it's a really cool place to see. So, um, there's the map that we saw earlier. Um, so now our degree programs. Um, we offer four bachelor's programs. Um, Native Environmental Science, Native Studies Leadership, Tribal Governance and Business Management, and um, our CARE program, which is our Human Services program. And then we have uh, associate degrees as well listed there. Um, so our Environmental Science program, um, there's basically two tracks. You can do a broad degree in Environmental Science, um, or you can do our interdisciplinary option. So you can actually um, build and design your degree uh, to focus on uh, something specific that you're interested in. So um, these are some of them that some of our students have done in the past, fisheries biology, marine biology, wetland biology. We've had forestry, water quality, GIS, environmental policy. Um, basically anything in the environmental science field, um, you can uh, build and design your degree around. And then some courses in the program. Uh, next is our Native Studies Leadership Program. Um, so this is basically our Native Studies Program. Um, it's it's uh, you're gonna it's gonna offer classes in Native history, uh, government and politics, cultural sovereignty, Indigenous theory and methods. Um, basically, your your um, uh, background uh, and, and tribal leadership. So um, Native Studies heavy in Native Studies courses. Um, tribal government and business management. Um, so this is for any student who wants to get into tribal government um, or business or casino management. There's a few different tracks that you can um, customize your degree to focus toward. Um, so uh, courses in this program are business law, accounting, economics, government and politics, grant management, finance and marketing. Um, 
And then lastly, our human services degree. Um, so this is our degree uh, for students who want to get into you know, social work or become a chemical dependency counselor, uh, things like that. So um, heavy in the you know, psychology and sociology type classes for any student who wants to get into that. Um, and then um, our two-year programs. Um, so we have a life sciences program. Uh, and most of our students who do this are interested in the health sciences field. So we don't have a, a nursing program or anything like that. Um, but we're able to get um, uh, you know, some background courses, do some prereqs, and then transfer into a, a program in the health sciences field, uh, something that we don't offer. And uh, the general direct transfer as well. So most of our students coming in, they get in the general direct transfer degree. Uh, it's just kind of your general studies uh, associates degree. Um, and then uh, you can kind of, if you're unsure what you want to do, you can um, take this, take some classes, and then get an idea of what you want to go into. Or we might not offer the degree program, and then you can take some prereqs with us in this program uh, before you uh, transfer on to another college. Um, and then business entrepreneurship, public and tribal administration, information technology, chemical dependency studies. Um, these are our other uh, associate degrees. Uh, we have an individualized program as well. And then our certificate programs. Um, so I know I went a little bit long, but um, that's basically uh, wrapping everything up there. Um, so here's my uh, contact information. Um, feel free to, to get a hold of me at any time. I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has. Thanks. Wow, thank you, Adam. That was wonderful. Um, I know that you come to Nevada when asked and requested, so we're really always thankful and glad to see you come to our state and we'll probably bring you back in for, for more stuff in the future. So I, I have the opportunity um, and pleasure to introduce our American Indian Fund um, and who offers scholarship. And I wanna introduce Nicolette Weston and Michelin um, Pennington. So I'm so excited to, to meet you both. And I know you're gonna be back as well. So thank you. And I'll move it back to you. Awesome. And we're excited to be here. Yeah. Um, while Nicolette is pulling up the presentation. I'll just do a little intro for the American Indian College Fund. And before I do that, actually, I want to say this is actually perfect timing. Next week, the American Indian College Fund will be hosting a tribal college and university college fair. Um, and each day will be divided out by majors. And I'll include that information in the chat box. So if you're interested in learning more about tribal colleges and all the wonderful programs they offer, um, then I highly recommend coming to some of those dates next week. Um, but the American Indian College Fund was started in 1989 and is the oldest charity um, working towards higher ed access for Native students and also supporting tribal colleges and universities. And for a long time, we were focused on the funding side of things. And then in more recent years, we started to focus more on the holistic student support. And so um, me and Nicolette work for the Native Pathways program, and we provide um, light coaching for students and a lot of other really wonderful resources that we're super excited to tell you about today. So I'll go ahead and let Nicolette introduce herself. Hi, good. I was, going, I was going to say good afternoon, um, but good evening, everybody. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so my name is Nicolette Weston. I am uh, the transfer and admissions coach uh, with the American Indian College Fund uh, Native Pathways Program. Um, so I'm over the, uh, the trans tribal college transfer program. And then just to give you guys a little bit of up the, just a little bit of information, um, you have any students that um, I can send out a brochure to there are six currently there are 16 eligible um, tribal colleges for our tribal college transfer program. And I'm, I believe oh, I don't have the picture for that. Um, so there are 16 eligible. I don't believe Northwest is on our list. I wanna double check on Haskell though. I'm not quite sure about Haskell, um, but currently we're, we work with 16 tribal colleges. Um, so students are eligible to apply you know, to our tribal college transfer program to 
transfer from their two-year degree to their four-year degree. So basically, we are just there to support and ensure that the TCU students complete um, those associate degrees and just have that academic readiness to succeed at a four-year degree institution. And Micheline is dropping, Micheline, is that you dropping stuff into our chat box or no? Yeah, I just put in the TCU fair information for next week and invited everyone to attend. Awesome, thank you. So moving on, why is this, there we go. Awesome, so if you finish the Tribal College Transfer Program with Nicola as your coach, um, and you are ready to go on to a four-year program, then you can join the College Success Program. So it, when you um, transition into a four-year institution, you'll receive like even more support on transitioning there, um, finding those resources on campus and things like that. Um, and this is with our coach, Sadie Redwing, who's not here tonight. Um, but this is just a little bit farther along the road. But just to give you an idea, if you do choose to go to a TCU, which is an amazing opportunity, um, and then you join the Tribal College Transfer Program, that support doesn't stop um, when you continue on for your um, four-year degree. Okay, my screen is going slow for some reason. There we go. Okay, now on to the um, the good stuff. This is usually our biggest um, questions that we receive also from um, organizations and tribal colleges, tribal college students. So the full circle scholarship and our TCU scholarship, our tribal college scholarships um, application are open. These, these applications are open year round. So February 1st is the transition date each year. The full circle scholarships, that application priority deadline is May 31st. These scholarships are administered by the college fund. They're awarded on a yearly basis. Awards range from 900 to 20,000 plus. Um, recipients must be enrolled full-time. Students can be part-time if they are graduating within a year. And scholarships can include light or heavy coaching awards go to both TCU and mainstream students. Um, previous recipients are also given preference. The TCU uh, scholarships, these TC, the TCUs actually set their own deadline for these applications and they're administered by the TCU. Uh, recently, we just um, up, updated our webpage too. So we now call it a student portal. So you can go to collegefund.org backslash student portal. Um, and then on this section, the students are able to create a profile and create their, um, their essays and drop those essays and you know, everything's in that front page there. And um, for like uh, for Dina, she just said she was a TCU graduate. So am I, so we're really familiar with these <laughs> TCU processes for our um, American Indian College Fund website. So my suggestion is just always keeping your essay on a, um, a jump drive. If you were like any of us, your essays are going to um, sometimes be, have a maximum uh, amount of wording on it for the TCU and the full, full circle scholarships. Also other scholarships that you might be applying for too. I just wanna add that if you're a high school senior this year and you wanna apply for one of those scholarships, the time that you would be doing that is between January 1st and May 31st. So the deadline for everyone is May 31st, but if you're, if you're a senior, um, then you'll wanna start doing that um, between January 1st and May 31st. And don't wait until the last minute. Um, I did that a few times in college and that did not, that was very overwhelming the night before the scholarship deadline. So. Um, be proactive. Yes, and um, one thing different between Full Circle and the TCU scholarships is coaching isn't normally involved with the um, TCU scholarships. However, they do have access to some of our online resources that we offer. All right, I'll give it over to Micheline to go over our college going guidebook. 
All right, awesome. And so this is something that is available to everyone. So any parents, students, counselors, anyone who is interested in higher education who's in the Zoom room, um, we encourage you to find this resource. And I'll go ahead and drop the link in the chat box. Um, it's completely free. There's a PDF version available online, but you can also request your own copy of it and we'll send one to you in the mail. Um, this is a beautiful piece of work related to everything higher ed um, that was created by Native Americans for Native Americans. Um, so it's very relevant and um, just very personal and genuine. And so I really value this um, and I love sharing it with students and I love sharing it with counselors. So um, you can learn about FAFSA in here. You can learn about um, finding a sense of belonging on campus. You can hear from students, you know, like what is it like to move away from home? What's it like to go um, to a TCU? Why did I choose a TCU? Um, so things like that. So this is a really great resource and I highly recommend checking it out. I'm gonna drop the link for that in the chat. The link will also include our fall education calendar. So you can find all of the events that we're gonna have this fall. These are available for everyone. So again, parents, students, counselors, anyone, um, we wanna welcome you. Um, it'll also include, we have checklists for each year in high school of things that you can be doing to become college ready. So if you scroll down the page a little bit more, and you're a ninth grader and you want to know what can I be doing this year? It feels early. Um, it's definitely not too early to be thinking about college. So check out the checklist and um, start going through that each year. So the next thing that I'll talk about are some of the updates that we have available and I'll be dropping these into the chat box as well. Um, so the first one is a scholarship update. So we talked about scholarships, but that was such a quick overview. Um, but we do have sessions that are just about scholarships where you can learn more about the application process and um, tips and tricks. So if you sign up for this update, you'll receive information about when those events are coming, but you'll also receive those tips and tricks in email form. You'll receive updates about our scholarships, but also about other important scholarship deadlines like the Gates Scholarship or the Cobell Scholarship. This is super important if you're a junior or senior. I highly recommend that you sign up for this update. Um, scholarship deadlines come up quick. Like as soon as senior year is starting, they're pretty much there. So um, this is a great way to stay on top of that. We have another update that you can sign up for, which is our Connect update. So if you're interested in exploring different career opportunities and fields, um, this is a great way to do that. Learn about internships um, and maybe learn about some things that are important like networking, um, or what is an internship? What are some interview skills I should have? And I think even most of us who have even gone to college, we're still kind of like interested in so many different careers. There's so many cool things out there to be doing. And so um, we have a useful tool for students to go in and kind of figure out some of the things they might be interested in, interested in and that is the focus two. Um, so in focus two, you can do a self-assessment, which is kind of like a personality test. Um, and then you can also explore different careers and majors. Um, within that. And then last, we want to encourage you to follow us on social media. So we are available on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Everything that I talked about, you can get this information by following us on there. So all those cool upcoming events. Um, and I just want to say again, I can't plug the events enough. Um, we do have super fun prizes. We have like Fitbits. Um, we do um, kind of like AirPods or Bluetooth headphones. Um, hard drives, which are really important. Again, like Nicolette said, if you're filling out those scholarship applications. You wanna save those to a hard drive, save your recommendation letters, all that kind of good stuff. So come to we our have events. The tablet. We have tablets, oh, we have tablets. too that we have, yeah. Sometimes laptops. Yeah. So join us. Exciting. Yeah. All right, and here's our contact information uh, for each of our programs that we, um, we offer. So there's Micheline's. Um, her email if you guys want to um, anybody watching you want to take a screenshot of that just reach out to either of us if you have any more questions thank you wow that was a lot of really great information thank you michelin and nicolette um i i i'm gonna have to get our kids to start following you guys so thank you um now I'd like to introduce um, my alma mater, um, Haskell Indian Nations University. And I'm gonna start with Coach Gary Tanner and I'm gonna move right along and he'll introduce Laura Rice. Coach Tanner. Hello there. Good to call you coach. Well, I appreciate everybody uh, inviting us to come in 
enjoying this presentation tonight uh, and share a little bit of information about uh, about Haskell. Um, we do have uh, a lot of alumni across the nation. We've been uh, we've been in business for 136 years since 1884. So we're in the third, fourth, and some maybe fifth generation of families that have come to Haskell. Uh, so it's, it is across the nation. We got 150 uh, federally recognized tribes from 38 different states. So uh, we, are, we are part of Native America all over the country. If there's an Indian community, there's some connection to Haskell. So we're proud of that. Uh, my name is Gary Tanner. I've been there a couple of years. Um, I'm not going to age myself, but I remember Dina very well, <laughs> and, and we have a lot of a lot of alumni, and, and I remember a lot of them. Um, but um, just I'm going to introduce Haskell real quick, and then we'll jump in with Laura, and then I'll be back to finish up. But uh, we're located in Lawrence, Kansas, right in the middle of the country, and we uh, we have at this time between 800 and 1,000 students each semester. Uh, Eighty percent of our students live on campus uh, in our residential dorms. Uh, so we are we are a place where you can get uh, newly connected. Your network's going. You can make new friends for lifelong friends. And I mean, we we just kind of turn into a family. And you're only limited to by what you want to be part of. Um, we are federally funded university. For Native American and Nazca Native students, and if you are one of those and you do meet our criteria, then uh, it only costs a hundred or seven hundred and fifteen dollars a semester. There's no tuition, no room and board. The only thing you're paying for is just some on-campus fees. And if you get to uh, you get Pell Grant, you get tribal funding, whatever you get uh, above that seven hundred and fifteen dollars, you get to keep that money. So we really um, we really give an opportunity for students and their parents or whoever is um, whoever's taking care of this guardian. So we try to take that that pressure right off of you, and, and we do with our programs. So, um, but you must be a uh, you must be a member of a federally recognized tribe to attend Haskell. Uh, so if you come to Haskell, every other person on that campus is a tribal member. So it's very unique. Um, you can learn a lot of different, uh, a lot of different cultures, a lot of traditions, a lot of ideas that that uh, are different from yours. So you can definitely learn about about your your people. Um, we do have this year. Uh, they did hire a new president. His name is Dr. Ronald Graham, and he wants to build Haskell. He wants to grow Haskell. Um, he is. Uh, putting in some programs that's going to be adding some degrees in the next few years and programs in the next few years. And he wants to grow and, and make Haskell uh, more impact than, than it is now like it, it used to be. So um, he's wanting to really set some really good goals for, for Native American education. So we're excited. Um, with that, uh, I'm going to introduce Miss Laura Rice. She's been here uh, at Haskell uh, this is her fifth year as a as a employee. She's she's got more connection from there. She's from the Bay Area in California, and she's a retention program uh, technician. Uh, but more than that, she helps so many students, and she does a great job of helping people. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Laura Rice. I'm always that person who leaves it on mute. So hello, good evening. My name's Laura Rice or Chamiqua, and I'm Prairie Band, Potawatomi, Kickapoo, Sack and Fox, Yurok and Wintoon. And I, like um, Coach Tanner said, this is my fifth year at Haskell full time. And prior to that, I did some adjunct teaching and social work. So I made a quick little presentation to kind of give an overview. Let's see if my, how my screen sharing abilities are today. Okay, so we'll start. All right, can everybody see that? All right, so Haskell. Oh, it's moving faster than I wanted it to. Okay, so um, 
It's been around for quite a while and it offers two year and four year degrees. We started offering four year degrees in 1993. We're in Lawrence, Kansas, which is a, a small city. It might feel like a big city to some, I guess it just kind of depends on where you're from, but it's a nice, it's a nice city. It's got a downtown area, um, kind of all the conveniences. Very interesting, unique weather. Um, uh, I'm still adjusting to it and I've been living in Kansas about 13 years now so still humidity still doesn't feel normal to me and this is one of my favorite pictures a couple of our past alumni one of them is currently getting her master's here's our mission statement And I adapted this presentation from one of our, um, it used to be called Vision Quest, but now it's called Haskell Seminar. Um, but I kind of adapted this, so I wanted to give an overview of what's required to graduate. Um, so there's different degree checklists for all our degrees, like any other college. And it's, so you have to fill out um, complete general education requirements. We want everyone to come out um, with knowledge from different areas. And we do have a historical and contemporary indigenous issues um, requirements within that. So everyone will come out of Haskell with either taking American Indian issues, history of North American Indian tribes, American Indian literature, diabetes and the Native American, um, and intro to tribal management. So everybody will take two of those classes at a minimum. Some take more and some even end up being indigenous studies majors. So for two year, we offer liberal arts, which is the general education requirements and elective courses. You can kind of mix and match that how you want. And you can use those electives to work towards a four year program if you'd like, um, or just explore. Media communications, which is where you can take digital photography, news writing, you can even write for the newspaper, make some um, uh, extra cash on the side too. That's kind of a nice, nice perk, not a requirement for class, but you, you can and get that experience. Communication studies. So if you really enjoy public speaking or speech communication, you can take that a step further and um, take things such as conflict and negotiation, legal communication, and then intercultural communications. One of the requirements so is interpersonal communication and working in groups and teams. Per professional education is for students who wanna be in the classroom for K through six later. And that degree is what you have to take um, as your two year if you wanna move on to the four year in elementary education. We don't offer um, a secondary education degree at this time. Um, so it's definitely for K through six. Um, and it's their degree checklist is the one that's most ever changing. So definitely if you end up in that program, get connected to an education advisor. And then social work is our other two year degree that's available. And that's for Associate of Arts. Um, and then for the Associate of Science, we have community health. So um, you would be learning about um, different health concerns on the community level, such as diabetes. Um, and uh, there's, I think it's 24 required courses in addition to the general education requirements. Um, natural science. So if you end up blessed with um, really good math, a really good math brain, that's a great one to go into because you take trigonometry and three lab science courses. And um, often students will take that one if they plan to go to environmental science. And then recreation and fitness management, you can learn how to really run your own um, health program. Um, and it can be a useful degree for lots of different things. And then the health sport and exercise science degree, that one is kind of a blend of classes from community health and recreation and fitness management. And you can kind of mix and match your um, health sports and exercise science classes in there to kind of how a little bit personalized too. So those are all our two-year degrees. You aren't required to get a two-year degree while you're at Haskell. You can just go straight for your four-year degree, but I think if they offer them, you really might as well because you're definitely gonna meet those requirements. I look at it as a bonus, um, another photo op to have that awesome graduation. So I always encourage our students um, to um, petition to graduate with their two-year degree as well, even if they're there just for their four-year degree. 
And then for your degrees, we have four different degree programs for Bachelor of Arts. We have Indigenous and American Indian Studies. I'm a little partial to this one because my background's in Native American Studies. And so, like I said, um, in addition to the required courses, you're gonna take a number of other Indigenous Issues courses. And a lot of um, folks might say, well, what am I gonna do with that? Man, you could do a whole lot of things um, with that degree. We have some in law school, we have some running different tribal programs. Um, really, our, our IAIS majors end up in a lot of different places. Business administration, and with that, you can do a tribal management emphasis. So if you want to work for your tribe um, or a different tribe, sometimes um, that can be um, a more ideal situation um, in terms of uh, tribal politics. You can kind of go wherever, wherever you'd like and where you can get in on. So tribal management and then management emphasis is the other one. If you're more interested in, I guess, um, just mainstream business, the class um, uh, options are a little bit different for those two. Um, you'll end up taking a couple of tribal law and legis legislation classes if you take the tribal management emphasis. Environmental science, that one, you're gonna be doing a lot of science lab classes, of course, and also um, statistics and calculus. So, um, and that's a really great one to take classes at um, KU for as well. Um, I'll talk about the opportunity for that um, in a couple of slides, but you can take classes towards that degree at KU. And then elementary education, that one is um, uh, for if you wanted to be a teacher in the K through six, it's very, it's definitely very intense. I've seen those students take 18 to 19 credit hours in a semester, whoo, and do other things like work, have a part-time job or be a part of different clubs. So they are very, very busy. Um, and so they're taking classes such as art methods for K through six and um, a little bit of science, um, like at least two different science labs, because um, you have to know so many different things to, to teach an all day elementary school class. So they're, they have a lot of different requirements. I think they actually require the most classes for the two year degrees, the paraprofessional education one. Um, it's usually just 60 credits, but for that particular degree, it's um, 65. Okay, and this just is just an overview of the different requirements. Um, I'll let somebody else handle the, the waiting room. And this is, sorry, my dog's really begging to get in my lap right now. Wants to be a part of the, the college fair. Um, and then this is just some um, technical things like um, you have to get a C or higher in all your math and English classes to move on to the next one. So if you're still in high school, definitely take advantage of your time there to develop those skills because it will help you in the, the long run to cruise through these sequences faster. And um, changing your major. So you can, you can start out as a HSES major and perhaps you change your mind to wanting to be social work. You can change that um, at any point. Sometimes it's a little inconvenient to change your major, um, like if you're in your very last semester of it, but it's, it's almost always a possibility. Okay, and then four-year degrees. At this point, you do have to apply to get into a four-year program. Um, so that's for whether you're already attending Haskell or not. So you can go to a different college for your two year and then transfer to Haskell for your four year, um, but you would have to apply to a four year program at the same time. So thinking way, way ahead there. Um, and of course, um, we often hear um, high school students say, or maybe it was just me, I don't know, um, D's get degrees or even when they go into college, that's not really true. Like some, at some point, like not even C's get degrees um, because for example, you have to have a 2.8 cumulative GPA. So that's all your grades averaged together to get into that elementary education program. So I try to tell my students B's get degrees and A's get more money. Um, so trying to get them to get as many A's and B's as they can. Okay, and then this is a little more info on graduation. And then there are some students who um, maybe planned this ahead, maybe didn't, but they might um, not know what they want to go into or they haven't really set in their mind for their two year degree program and they'll start out at Haskell. So, for example, in liberal arts, but 
they decide that they want to go into nursing school. Now, Haskell doesn't have a nursing program currently, so they would have to eventually train schools to somewhere that has a Bachelor of Science in nursing program. So I, I, in most cases, the liberal arts one is the easiest one to get your two-year degree in if you're planning to transfer, because like I said, you can use those electives to take classes that'll help you get into those other four-year programs at different schools. So for nursing, probably taking statistics within those electives in anatomy and physiology lab uh, or lecture and lab. And so if there is a class that's not offered at Haskell that KU offers and their space, you can actually, as long as you're getting those good grades, Bs, Bs and up, um, maybe the occasional C in there, um, you can, because the two, it's a 2.5 um, cumulative GPA to qualify for this program, but you can take a class at KU for $0 tuition, which is really saving you thousands of dollars, and you just pay for books and fees, which honestly, that can be hundreds, but um, you might make a friend with a junior or senior student who's good at um, buying, buying books or come to my office or give me a call. I'm pretty good at that too. Um, so um, that's a really great way to knock out some classes that maybe Haskell doesn't offer, um, but KU does. So you can, and you can do that while you're at Haskell. And then let's say you really like Kansas and you're really all about humidity and Jayhawks, you can actually go to KU, um, even if you're not from Kansas, as long as you went to Haskell for a semester, you can go there for in-state tuition. So that saves you thousands of dollars as well. Can you tell I'm a kind of a couponer? Um, so <laughs> it has a lot of value there. And then you could actually even, um, if the, the, I guess, rules are still the same, if you needed to stay at Haskell one more semester than that two-year degree, um, you could actually request to stay an additional semester. Um, yeah, you have to do everything formally so that you're, if you're eligible for Pell, that works out too. So there's that. And then in terms of how to plan, if you're um, going to graduate early, from your high school or you're currently um, took last semester off because you already graduated, you can go ahead and apply to Haskell by November 15th to get in for spring 2021, which is the semester starts in mid mid January, maybe a little, maybe the a little later than that. And if you want to do fall, apply by June 1st. I do recommend though applying a bit earlier than that. I I think you should set a personal deadline for around March because the sooner you apply and know if you're in, um, the sooner you can send all your FAFSA information. And you could actually do your FAFSA before June anyway. Um, but I think it's, you wanna make sure that um, you have that in order. Um, we don't take new students for the summer semester. That's a question that gets asked a lot. We have them wait until fall. And then how to apply. Currently, we do snail mail. So you'll have to print out, um, find someone with a printer. If you don't have a printer, um, you can even send them the file and they could leave it outside their door for safety reasons if needed. Um, we had to really strategize over the, over the um, summer. Um, so yeah, paper applications, US Postal Service, $10 application fee, you can pay it online and um, print out your receipt or save the receipt and email it to admissions. Um, make sure that you order official transcripts from high school and or any college, well, I guess not or, and any college you attended. Um, so even if you did dual credits, make sure that you ask that college to send your transcripts to Haskell through mail. Um, if you're able, um, take the ACT for, um, and I say if you're able because we're not requiring them for, to get into the spring semester, we do plan to require it for fall. We do take SAT scores too, but ACT is what's preferred. And then a copy of your CDIB or descendancy paperwork um, because you have to be enrolled in or a direct descendant of a federally recognized tribe. And we have more info about that on our website. And then we also still require, um, even though we may be online next semester, an immunization record. And so, cause we, we don't wanna get any cooties through Zoom. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, immunization record. This is our fall 2020 student enrollment summary. We have um, 
about 730 students. We have a lot more um, ladies than men at this point. Um, and then our breakdown by class, and then our breakdown by brand new students, students who were here from the previous semester, transfer students, um, students readmitted, so students who had come here before and took a semester longer break. And then here is our breakdown by tribe. So maybe try to make your tribe a record, everyone do a group apply or something, um, that would be cool. <laughs> Hey, Laura, thank you so much. That's a lot of information. And we're really excited to have you here with us. And I know that we're gonna invite you back as well because that's that's really good information and a lot of stuff that students are gonna need in the future. Thank you, Coach Tanner and Laura for speaking on Haskell's behalf and providing us information on Haskell. Uh, we do have a few minutes left. Um, Ferdina is going to run a short video or intro. Do we have enough time for that, Ferdina? I'm going to give you like one minute of information about SIPI. And this comes from um, the, the uh, Annie project. So I'm just going to share this with you. And please, um, I dropped it in the in the chat. This will give you an example of the Annie project. Free, and that's what SIPI can offer you. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm just going to give you a few highlights from the um, SIPI website. If you visit our SIPI website, it's www.sipi.edu. And uh, we revamped this website about three years ago. Um, so we're always trying to stay ahead of the game and we're always trying to stay um, branded as an institution and also culturally relevant. So you can see that that kind of, of that theme is, is, is uh, consistent throughout our college and we're cognizant of that. So underneath admission services, you have pay my fees. Um, we saw some of the, that area and cost. So I encourage you just to look at our college website and find out a lot of the resources that we have. Um, we have the scholarships, um, the scholarships tab that you can check out. We have some videos online that you can also check out. And also if you're a family um, that has children, you can check out also the um, childcare, the SIPI YDI. And that will also give you an area to apply for childcare even before you get here. Um, one thing that I have to point out is we don't have family housing. So that we, we do apologize for that. And we do we do know that that's a need, but at this time we don't, we do, we do not uh, host uh, family housing. So that's just to give you a little idea of um, the, SIP, the SIPI's um, website. So please, if you're a student, check it out. Check out the Amplified Nevada Native Youth um, YouTube page to find this presentation that we did, um, I think last month already. And I'm gonna turn it back to Fawn for Q and A's. Thank you, Virginia, and thank you everybody on the panel this evening for speaking on behalf of what is offered to our Native American students. Um, for Washoe County School District, this video will be available on our Family School Partnerships, and it'll also be available on Ferdina's Annie on the YouTube channel. So please tune in and also use the um, all of the links that were provided during this presentation. I appreciate everybody being here. I do have one question for um, some of our students that are attending our Jumpstart programs within the state of Nevada are the Jumpstart programs when they receive their AA in high school, um, will this transfer to some of the TCUs? Are you talking like preparatory courses? So the Jumpstart program, they receive their AA in high school and their um, high school diploma at the same time. So when they leave high school, they'll have their associate's degree from either TMCC in Nevada here or from Western Nevada College um, here close. And I believe Great Basin College also offers the Jumpstart programs. So their college courses and high school courses at the same time. I just want to know if some of our TCUs online know are that are with us this evening know if they are transferable once they receive the A into their 
if they wanted to do the bachelor's program? I think for Haskell it is. I was a um, counselor there as well. So Laura. So I don't really know too much about Jumpstart, but I know that we got a student just last fall. I think it was last fall who came from Nevada. And I was like, what, you already have your associate degree? How did that happen? And I think it happened through y'all. Um, so I'm gonna say yes, because I remember working her degree checklist and like everything transferred at least as an elective and a lot of them counted as general education credits. Very impressive because she went right into a four year program. Adam? Yeah, we have, um, it's called Running Start up here and it, it's, it's the same thing. So they, they take college courses for their final two years of high school. And it, you know, as long as it's from a, an accredited college, then if, if they have their AA, they're going to come come in as a as a junior. They'll just have to take a, a, a transfer seminar course, um, and then they'll be able to transfer into or start right in with one of our four year programs. Very good. I have a question Thank too. Thank you, Adam and Haskell. Um, and I, this is a question for our um, colleagues, Michelin and Nicolette. Um, you talked about the college fair next week, and I'm real excited to um, see more information on that. Can you just expand just a, just a tad on what's, who's going to be there, what's gonna, what it's kind of going to look like? Yeah, so I was actually just checking in with Nicola, and unfortunately, neither her or I have the list of TCUs that will be in attendance. But we do know, and we reached out to every TCU, and so we do know a lot of them will be attending. And each day will be dedicated to a different major. So I can put those links in the chat again, and I can also send them to you if you wanna share those with your students and colleagues. Um, and then we also have a graphic with the event. So it'll be around um, lunchtime for those of us in um, Colorado and in mountain time. Um, and it'll be about an hour and a half of panel. Um, so we will have representatives from the various TCU to talk about different majors. So Monday will be um, health careers. Um, and then on Tuesday will be science and STEM. Wednesday, trying to remember these all off the top of my head, but I think I wrote them down, so I don't know why I'm doing that. Let me just pull it up real quick. Um, so Wednesday will be liberal arts. So anyone interested in uh, learning a second mm -hmm. language? Micheline, do you have the graphic with you? If you um, it. You share your screen. Yeah, I can find it. Well, you're finding that. Um, coach Tanner, are you still uh, the coach for golf? Uh, it's an interesting story. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, uh, I've also been the softball coach for the last five years. And uh, I came back from golf to that. And I think that I'm going to be going back to golf this next year. Uh, and uh, we're looking for, we might be looking for a head softball coach. But yes, I'm going to rebuild that golf program again. And I'm excited about doing that. Very good. I'm going to insert the links again for the event next week. So that's in the chat box. And that has it broken up by each day. So each day has its own Zoom registration. And then, um, oh yeah, I can share my screen. Oh, I can't share my screen actually. It says it's disabled. I'll share it. This is the, the webinar. It'll be, let's see. yeah, this, so this graphic will be for each day. Um, and then this is just for Wednesday this registration form here. So each registration form will look the same. Um, we do typically record them. So even if you can't attend, like let's say you're busy around that time, feel welcome to um, go ahead and register. And then if we do record it, which like I said, we usually do, um, we will usually send that out to the registrants. All right. Yeah, we reached out to all, um, <clears throat> all of the TCU um, admissions and registrars. So if you guys, just check with them um, also just to make sure they got our emails 
um, because we'd really like to have, you know, you guys in attendance as well. Um, we, Friday, Friday, we actually have athletics and sports. Um, is that, that's our day to highlight some of the TCUs and their athletic programs. Okay. Um, sorry. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, unfortunately, we are running out of time. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for participating on this webinar. Once again, I'm going to uh, put on the chat a survey for the participants so you guys can fill that information. Um, and uh, we appreciate your time. And I don't know if there's anything else uh, you would like to say. I think somebody was going to talk when I start talking. I just wanted to thank everybody for coming this evening for presenting for Native American students. Um, we'll be sharing these links with our families. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you guys can um, disconnect. And if you want to fill out the form, the link is there. And once you are um, to press the link, we are going to be here for like a minute to let you click on the link. And then we will uh, be leaving the room too. Thank you.